Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Planning for Your Microsoft Dynamics GP Year End. We appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to join us today. There are a couple of housekeeping items we would like to mention before we begin the presentation. All attendees are in listen-only mode. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please either raise your hand so we can unmute you, or you can submit them through the GoToWebinar question box. We will be answering questions throughout the presentation. We'll also be following up after the presentation to answer any additional questions. I'd like to introduce today's speaker. We have Jeff Smith, who is a Solutions Architect here at Socius. So at this point, Jeff, I believe we're ready to transition the presentation over to you. Thank you very much, Lindsay. And thanks to all of you for taking time out of your day today uh, for the uh, annual review of the Dynamics GP uh, year-end closing uh, procedures. Uh, we had uh, a session on Tuesday that was very specific to the uh, Dynamics GP payroll module. Today's presentation will cover everything beyond payroll. And um, so anyway, I wanted to start off by just talking about what the goals of our presentation are going to be. And first of all, we want to review the common year-end processes uh, that uh, you may uh, uh, follow based upon the modules that you're using inside of Dynamics GP and also providing uh, tips and tricks for preparing for the year end. Um, you know, part of the, uh, what you'll see as we go through this is that the process itself inside the software is not really very difficult. Um, and uh, so part of the reason we do this session every year is because you only do it once a year and it's hard to remember everything. But really the important thing is to being prepared for the process itself and uh, making sure that you time things the way they should be. So we're going to provide an overview and some comments on the year-end checklist. Uh, and everything that we have from a checklist perspective is going to be available to you uh, also on customer source. So if any of you are using customer source, feel free to reach out to that. And we're going to also give you screenshots with a path to each of the windows where this process takes place. Um, so a couple things I wanted to do before we actually got into the meat of this is just make some recommendations. Um, so number one, uh, this is uh, a process that you do just once a year. And so uh, we want to make sure that you are methodical and prepared for this. So we recommend that you use your resources um, because this isn't something that you do every day so that you can go back and make sure that you're following the proper process and have a checklist to get everything done uh, and done properly. So some of the resources that you can use are customer source. Like I mentioned just a moment ago, customer source, for those of you who don't know, is Microsoft's um, web presence for people using Dynamics GP so that you can um, get anything from uh, current news to uh, checklists to uh, common error messages, all kinds of things that can be available to you. Uh, on customer source, and all of the checklists that I'm going to go through are actually uh, in customer source or on customer source. Also, if you run into a problem, you can always reach out to um, the uh, uh, Dynamics GP solution support team at Microsoft. Uh, and then also, and I didn't really update this slide, I also did this presentation for a user group uh, uh, meeting where some of the attendees were not working with those users, but Certainly feel free to work, reach out to your GP partner, which is Socius, uh, because we have people on board that are very well versed in the year-end processes and we'll be glad to help you. Uh, second recommendation beyond using your resources is to be prepared. So uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure that all of your day-to-day -day activities are complete. So we want to make sure that there's no, nothing left uh, that in your normal activities do and then you can start on the year-end process. And we'll talk about uh, timing and things like that as we go through each of the individual modules. And then really the third recommendation is just as important is to be methodical. Review and follow your year-end checklist. Uh, verify uh, your uh, ISV or independent software vendor, third-party add-ons for their compatibility. And please make sure that you make backups along the way. And uh, in each one of these checklists, we'll talk about uh, making backups so that you're prepared. And 
And in case something would go astray, which it really should not, you're uh, in good shape. So there are a couple other resources beyond the ones that I've mentioned that are available to you. So uh, if any of you uh, are members of the GP user group, um, you can also go to www.gpub.com. Uh, there's uh, certainly lots of materials there that are available. Uh, there are other um, websites that are available to you where some of the key uh, consulting teams uh, provide insights. Uh, so gpwindow.com, uh, victoriauden.com, and dynamicaccountant.com are just three of those sites that actually uh, not only will help you uh, get access to certain things, but uh, beyond, they can go beyond your in checklist and give you, uh, you know, some question and answer, uh, some knowledge base, etc., on how to use Dynamics GP overall. So. I'm going to go back to the concept of customer source one more time, and I promise this will be the last time. Uh, but these checklists that are available on customer source each have a number assigned to them. And for those of you that have sat through this presentation before, if you were to go back and look at the presentation, you'll notice that these numbers don't change. So uh, in uh, we're going to cover inventory, and the article that covers inventory uh, control year-end processing is 872713. So if you go in to the knowledge base in customer source and type in that number, it'll bring up your inventory control checklist. You also can type in inventory year-end process and it should bring you to that same, uh, that same article. But these numbers are very precise. Receivables management is 857444. Payables management is 875169. Fixed asset management is 865-653. Analytical accounting is 960-356. And then general ledger is 888-003. These articles uh, are updated each year to really focus in on the modules uh, and the versions that are uh, supported today. So today, uh, with Dynamics GP, the supported versions are GP 2013. GP 2015 and GP 2016. Uh, and in fact, GP 2016 release 2 was just released. However, if you're still on GP 2010, you'll find that the process is actually very similar, probably the same. Uh, so you can still use these uh, checklists as a guidepost. So, um, just a couple quick things in your year-end checklist. Make sure that you finalize any or all applicable transactions. So um, make sure that, um, and I'll talk about these module by module, but any transactions that apply to 2016 are wrapped up and done and posted before you move on to do your year-end. Uh, reconcile your sub-modules to the general ledger. Um, so uh, that might uh, mean your in payables, your uh, accounts payable H trial balance, uh, historical H trial balance. Make sure that that balances to your GL balance. Same with accounts receivable. Um, and uh, there are uh, several other reports that are available. Print any necessary reports and file them. Uh, make a backup when you're finished. So before you begin the closing process for your modules, Make sure you have a backup so that if something were to go astray, and again, it shouldn't, but just make sure that you're, you're covered. And then you can begin your closing process. Uh, this window uh, is about closing your um, fiscal period. I'm going to actually talk about closing your fiscal period during each of the different modules checklists. And I just wanted to show you this window. Many of you may be familiar with it. But this fiscal period setup window is where you have the ability, after you've closed your year, to come back in and close each of the individual periods as well. So we'll talk about this in more detail as we go through. What I tried to do is include um, the path to get to that individual screen. So. Um, 
if you go to on the left hand side of your window and when you're in Dynamics GP at your home page, click on administration, select setup, company, and fiscal periods, and it'll bring you to this specific window. Okay? All right, so these are the modules that we're going to talk about today. Um, and I'm going, to, I'm going to say this, two of the bullet points on this list don't actually have close, uh, year and closing processes, but affect some of the other modules. And so I want to make sure that we talk about that as well. So we're going to start off with sales order processing and purchase order processing. We'll then proceed to inventory, receivables, payables, fixed assets, analytical accounting, and general ledger. All right, so I'm going to move into sales order processing and purchase order processing first. And by the way, this is really the order for which we recommend that you do your year-end closing. Um, and um, as an example, when we get into the, uh, the fixed asset management um, portion of the year-end process, Actually, one of the steps in that process says that, hey, all of your payable transactions have to be posted first. So that's, you want to make sure that your payables module is closed before your fixed asset module. The one module that really gives you the most flexibility on when you close is your general ledger. But there certainly are considerations in regards to that as well. So when we talk about sales order processing and purchase order processing, there really is no specific year-end close process in either one of those modules. However, sales order processing has a trickle-down effect into receivable. Purchase order processing has a trickle-down effect into, into payables. And so, therefore, it's really important uh, before you close your year to make sure that you double-check in sales order processing for any applicable invoices and returns or returns and make sure they get posted. All right, so from sales order processing, make sure those are posted because then they will flow through your accounts receivable uh, portion of your solution as well. And therefore, when we close that, it will be all inclusive of all the appropriate transactions. From the purchase order processing side, what we'd like to make sure you do is double check for any applicable receivers and invoice matches and make sure that they're posted. So many of you who use purchase order processing understand that there is a three-way matching process in purchase order. So you're going to first receive goods against the purchase order and that does need to be posted. And then you'll match the invoice to the receipt and the PO. And so, and then when those invoices are posted, that will then update your payable. So please make sure that you um, that you make sure that all of those that are appropriate are posted. The other thing to keep in mind is both of those modules have a trickle down effect on inventory as well. Lastly, uh, in regards to the year end processing for sales order processing and purchase order processing, is the purchase order module has a report called Receive Not Invoice that will tie to your accrued purchases liability account in your general ledger. And to get to that report, you can go to Purchasing, Report, Analysis, and then Receive Not Invoice. So it's another example of where you want to reconcile before you close your year. Uh, this is not a formal reconciliation process like some of the other modules may have, but it is certainly um, something that allows you to tie your purchase order module to your general ledger and make sure that that ties out. All right, so again, no specific year in process. Simply make sure that all the appropriate transactions are posted and are flowing through the rest of the system. Okay, so our next module uh, that we're going to cover is inventory. So um, from the inventory perspective, what you need to understand is that the inventory module should be closed at the end of your fiscal year. Now, many of you may uh, have work on a calendar year, so in that case, your calendar and your fiscal year are the same. Um, but you want to make sure that the module is closed before you enter any new transactions that would affect inventory quantities um, before they're posted. Because as we go through this year, 
checklist for inventory, one of the things we're going to suggest you do is a fiscal count. And obviously, any of these transactions will have an effect on that. Okay. So what does the uh, what does that uh, inventory uh, closing process do? It transfers all of your summarized current year quantity, cost, and sales amounts to last year for items for which you have been keeping summarized sales history. It updates the item's beginning quantity from the quantity on hand at each site. And it zeroes the quantity sold field in the item quantity maintenance um, uh, screen for each individual site that you have in inventory. So that's what this process does. So each of these individual modules are um, uh, each of these individual modules are going to have summary windows that summarize the activity that's occurred during the year. And we're going to show you a couple of those screens when, in some of the other modules, but just understand what the year in process does. The other thing I want you to consider is the year in closing process really, except for the general ledger, should be a fairly quick process because really what all it's doing is making sure that these summary windows get updated to reflect your new year versus your previous year. So it moves a lot of that information from your current year to last year and allows you to track all of this activity uh, at a summary level. Some additional options that you'll have when you actually run the year in close is you'll have the ability to remove discontinued items from your inventory. Uh, you'll be able to remove any sold receipts, uh, so you know you have a purchase receipts uh, report inside of inventory. Uh, it allows you to remove uh, sold lot attributes and cost change history because you have the ability to do cost changing inside of the inventory module. And lastly, if you're uh, using um, the uh, periodic costing methods of LIFO or FIFO, it will actually update your item standard cost. So the Dynamics GP module actually allows you to track uh, or cost out your items on a, a LIFO or FIFO perpetual, a weighted average, or a standard cost. So if you're using standard cost, this will actually update the item standard cost as part of the year in process optionally. So that's the ramifications of what the year in process does in inventory. Now what I want to do is kind of talk about what steps you're going to go through. And then lastly, what I'll do is I'll actually show you the window for which you do your year end. So in inventory, we want to make sure that we post all the transactions for the year. We reconcile the inventory quantities. And what reconciling does is it makes sure that your summary windows match your transaction detail window. And there's really two different ways of doing that. There's a more advanced option that's available as part of the Professional Service Tools Library, or there is just a reconcile uh, functionality that's built into the GP utility. You should complete a physical inventory count. And many of the organizations we work with only do a physical count once a year, and this would be your time. So make sure that you complete your physical count and then make post any of those adjustments that we were talking about. So that kind of goes back to what we were saying in the beginning. Make sure all appropriate transactions have been posted. If there are any reports that you use uh, in inventory that you produce on a monthly basis, for instance, or any regularity, make sure those reports are actually printed. And then you'll be ready to prepare for closing the year. So uh, you'll make a backup. You close the year, and then you'll close the fiscal period for the inventory series. So uh, you may recall that fiscal period setup window I showed you at the beginning. One of the columns that you can close uh, is inventory. And this is an optional step, so it's not required, but uh, it is certainly something you may want to think about. And then lastly, after you've closed the year, make sure you make a final backup. So follow these steps, 
uh, be methodical about following these steps and make sure that you make your backup so that this process goes smoothly and you're never left in a situation where you can't go back. So in inventory, this is the window that you would go to to do your urine close. So to get to it, you would select inventory from the menu on the left-hand side of your window. You would select routines and then urine close. And this is exactly what that window will look like. And just like we talked about with some of the options, I can remove the discontinued items. I can uh, remove the sold lot attributes. I can remove sold receipts and cost change history. And you can even define there, you can define what date you want to do. And then lastly, you can update the item current cost, standard cost, I'm sorry. So all of those things are optional uh, things that you can do or choose as part of the process. So once you've made those decisions, you simply click the process button and it will go in and it will run that process. So a fairly easy process is really more about being prepared than it is about anything else. So Lindsay, I'm going to take a minute and just see if anybody has any questions so far about what we've talked about on sales, orders, purchase orders, and inventory. Um, there are no questions, um, but just a reminder, the presentation will be available to everyone after um, it's over on the website. and. Um, and then you, everybody will also get an email sent out with it as well. Thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate that. All right. So now we're going to move into receivables and payables. Uh, we're going to start with the receivables management module. Uh, so with receivables management, um, there are really what's unique about receivables management is that it actually allows you to have two different year ends. So for any of you that do not operate on a calendar year, there is actually a calendar year in close and a fiscal year in close. So the, the calendar year in close should be done just like you'd expect at the end of the calendar year prior to posting any transactions into the next calendar year. And I'll talk a little bit more about why that is important. And I will also tell you that uh, there are ways to work through that if that doesn't end up working into your flow. The fiscal year in close should be done at the fiscal year and prior to posting any transactions in the next fiscal year. So many of the clients we work with, for instance, may have a July 1 year, uh, year start, a 630 year end, in which case, they would run a calendar year in close at 1231. They'd run a fiscal year in close at 630. So they can be run separately. If you operate on a calendar year, they can be run at the same time. So the fiscal year in close actually allows you to transfer all the amounts other than the year-to-date finance charges to the last year column in customer summary. Uh, using the amount since last closed view. And I'll show you that view in just a minute. All right. So the calendar year, simply all it does is it really transfers the calendar year to date finance charge amount uh, to the last year in the customer summary amount since last closed. And again, same, same bit. I will show you that window. Um, if these amounts are incorrect in the amount since last closed view, you will actually, there are some scripts that you can run to actually uh, put your detail and your summary back in sync. Uh, those are available for Microsoft if we need them. And I'll show you the windows here in just a moment. But just to go through the steps, uh, for receivables, you're going to post all of the sales and receivables transactions for the year. So again, when I refer to sales, I'm talking more about the sales order processing or the invoicing modules. And then uh, when I talk about the receivables transactions, I'm talking about anything that goes through receivables, including cash receipts, et cetera. So once we've done that, we make a pre-year end close backup. We close the year. And then we can close the fiscal period. Again, optionally. So that goes back to that window that's in the slide deck that we talked about 
that, uh, that allows you to close the period for each individual year. You also can close the tax year, and I will talk about the tax year at the end of the table discussion as well. And then you can make a post-year-end closing backup. And I will tell you that this process, depending on the volume of data that you have, can also be a very quick process because the actual process itself is simply clearing out summary data to zero and moving all of that current year data to last year. So when I talk about the, um, the customer summary, if I bring up a customer here, you can see that there is a summary view. And you'll notice there's this drop-down list here. This uh, actually gives you the amount since last closed, or it can show, you, show it to you as fiscal or calendar. So you can actually, the system is actually date sensitive to a large degree. So in this amount since last closed, then this is how much I, the year to date amount is the amount that has been posted since the last time I closed. And then when I run the year end close, all of this data will move into the last year column and everything in year to date will go to zero. The issue that we run into is this number in the amount since last closed can be used uh, as a year to date figure that can be pulled into smart list. And if you're doing any kind of uh, sales analysis and you want to see your customers and year to date sales, this number will not be accurate if you do not close if you do not close your year at the appropriate time. So in other words, if I'm uh, 30 days late on closing that, that could include uh, transactions that in the year to date figure that don't belong there. And then when I do run the year and close, it'll actually move those numbers into last year. So this number will not be completely accurate. Also, uh, under the uh, sales card uh, and summary and finance charges, this is then tracking year-to-date finance charges. And this is what gets cleared out when you do your calendar year in close. So the actual process to do the close is very simple. Uh, you can see here that uh, I can select which year to close. In this case, it's marked as all, which would suggest that we're actually working on a calendar year because um, we're doing both calendar and fiscal year and closing at the same time. Once you do your close, this will actually update to show the date that it was closed. And you also optionally have the ability to print a report that will show you everything affected by that year and close. So typically, you'd mark this appropriately. You'd click process. It would run that process. It can print a report along with it. And then you move on to your new year. And oftentimes, this can be a fairly quick and easy process. But please make sure that you've got everything posted and you're prepared to do this before you do it. So I wanted to go and elaborate a little bit more about what I was talking about in that year-to-date uh, situation. So I went into a smart list and I decided that I wanted to pull total sales year to date. This number here specifically uh, is affected by when I close. So um, many of our clients use year to date numbers to determine the activity levels and the volume for which their different customers are working. It could affect pricing that they're offered, etc. And so this number uh, will be zeroed out when you do your year and close process. Otherwise, it will continue to count up. And we have had clients that haven't closed for years, and these numbers are, are very large. Um, so just understand what the purpose of it is. And also, going back to what I said earlier, if you get into a situation where you have missed your cutoff and you've forgotten to close receivables, there are utilities that will allow you to uh, update these numbers to make sure they're correct. So there is an escape um, and a correction if you get into that situation. But obviously the easiest thing to do is to close your year at the appropriate time before you post anything new into the new year. 
All right. So I'm going to go ahead and follow through on uh, payables management. And the payables management module is very similar to what we just talked about in uh, the receivables module. So again, you're going to have a calendar year enclosed, a fiscal year enclosed, and they should be done right at the end of the calendar year and the fiscal year. And just like before, the calendar year enclosed has a very specific purpose, and that is to transfer your 1099 amount from the year-to-date column to last year in that amount since last closed due. The fiscal year does everything else, everything else, whether that be uh, year-to-date invoices or billings, year-to-date uh, cash payments, et cetera. This is really just your 1099 amount that gets affected by this. And we, still, and we also have a utility, just like we talked about, that allows you to say, if the amounts are incorrect, in this view, you can run some scripts that will fix them. So the steps that we follow on payables are we're going to post all the transactions for the year. We're going to print the age trial balance with options, which should actually then tie out to your general ledger. Uh, we can also optionally print the vendor period analysis report. That's really not required. Um, you can, uh, and this one might surprise you, install the payroll year-end update. So many of you on this call may not even run GP payroll. However, that year-end update that is provided for payroll to prepare you to run W-2s and so forth also will include any updates that might be available for the 1099. And it really is more of a service pack so that there are some other module effects. And in, in um, payables, it could be uh, any kind of changes to the 1099. So you do want to make sure that you install the payroll year-end update if you know, if you know there are going to be changes to that document. You can then make a backup. So you got everything done. You printed your report. And by the way, you can also print an age trial balance and receivables as well, because that should then tie out to your GL. Uh, verify the 1099 information and edit it if it's required. And if you're on GP 2013 or later, there are some functions that I'll show you in a minute that allow you to go back and say, for instance, you added a new vendor that's a 1099 vendor but you uh, didn't set them up that way at first, so there may be some transactions that should have qualified, but they didn't, you can actually go back and edit them after the fact. So then you want to print your 1099, but in reality, the 1099 process is actually, um, is actually date sensitive. So it will look at just the transaction for the appropriate year, in this case, 2016. So once you've done that, then you can run your pre-year and uh, your backup, and then go ahead and close your years. And you're seeing a trend here, close the fiscal period, and then close the tax year. So, uh, and then after you've done with all that, then you can make a backup that is named post-year end. So this is actually uh, the window, uh, the summary window I wanted to make sure you saw. So you can see here the year-to-date amounts and the amount since last closed. These year-to-date amounts will continue to increase until you actually close your year. And then on the fiscal year end side, the 1099 amount, which is blocked out here, that's more, that gets affected by when you close your calendar year. The screen looks almost identical uh, to what you saw on the receivable side. So you can do all fiscal or calendar. You can print a report. And then once you've done it, it will actually update the closing date so that you can see when you did the last close. And then here's just another smart list. Uh, I won't go into as much detail because it's the same process. This amount billed year to date is going to be based upon when you closed your year. Um, I did want to make sure that we included uh, some screenshots of the uh, functionality that's available to you to go in and edit 1099 transactions. So you can see here that here's a list of all of the vouchers. 
you can actually do a range of dates. You can see all of these individuals. You can change the box, uh, you know, et cetera. So this is all available to you. And then you also have the ability to do more of a mass update. So you can pick a specific vendor and, um, and uh, you can change, for instance, if, if they weren't set up as a 1099 vendor and now you want them to be, you can actually go in and change the tax type, the 1099 box, et cetera, and simply click process to do that. And then here's where you print your 1099s, and notice that it's going to ask you for a year. So as long as all of your uh, as long as all of your transactions were marked appropriately to be 1099, and your vendors were marked to be 1099, then it you can run those 10, 1099 after your year end close, sometime during the month of January, and they should be just fine. And you'll notice here that we can print the 1099 and the 1096, which is the summary document for that. And then lastly, under administration routines and uh, tax year and close, this is where you can actually close your year end for tax. And you can print a report, close the year. It's a very similar process to what we, what we were just looking at. So I've now covered uh, receivables. I've covered payables. Are there any, any Lindsay, are there any questions uh, on those two modules? There are not at this moment. Okay. Thanks, Lindsay. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to cover is um, the fixed assets module. And uh, so with fixed assets, I'm uh, Notice the first item here is you need to perform all the year-end closing procedures for payables. You need to enter all of your fixed asset transactions for the current fiscal year. You need to depreciate all assets through the last day of the current fiscal year. And then you need to post to the general ledger. And then lastly, run any year-end reports that you want to keep as part of the year-end financial record. Okay, so pretty simple. Uh, stuff that you're going to do anyway in regards to all of this, entering the transactions, printing your report, uh, posting to the general ledger. And then from there, uh, make sure that the fixed assets uh, calendar is built correctly uh, moving forward. Verify that the quarters are set up correctly. Create a backup. And then perform the fixed assets year and closing routine. And that simply looks like this. You can tell it, you know, as you probably know, if you're using fixed assets, there can be multiple books. You then have the ability to, and this is going to do the same thing. It's going to update the year-to-date, life-to-date numbers for each asset. So you simply would insert any of the books that you're going to uh, run the year in for, insert them, and then you will process them. And at that point, then uh, it will make the appropriate updates, zero out the year-to-date information, move it to last year, and everything is good. So the biggest thing about fixed assets is simply making sure that uh, the payables module is done first, and then making sure that you have everything posted. It's really a very simple uh, comparison to every other module that you're doing. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move into the analytical accounting module. And just to say, just like sales order purchase order processing, there really isn't a separate year-end closing procedure for analytical accounting. Um, but balance brought forward entries are created for analytical accounting dimensions automatically as part of the year-end closing process if those dimensions are set up to have that. And so I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So when you, uh, and first of all, many of you may not use analytical accounting, but analytical accounting allows us to create what are called dimensions. And a, a dimension can be uh, a job, it can be a variety of different things that you want to track but not have to build them into your chart of account. 
So we have uh, clients doing this for a lot of different things. For instance, a number of not-for-profits may use this to track uh, spending against grants, so your dimension might be grants. Um, we have some that, uh, an association that works with doctors, and they may set up their dimension as doctors so that they can track expenses by doctor without building the doctors into the chart of account. And then um, as part of this, then, you can include the dimensions in the year and close process. That's a setting. You've got to decide if you want to do that or not. And then also when you're setting up the dimension, there is a setting here for year and close, and it says consolidate balances during year and close. So um, this is really a choice, and it depends on the nature of the dimension that you're using uh, as to whether or not this is appropriate for you to do. All right. So I'm going to move on to the general ledger, and um, then uh, we will uh, field any additional questions that you may have. So the general ledger is always the final module to be closed. And what makes it unique is it doesn't really need to be closed immediately like the other module. However, you may have some compelling reasons to do it. And I'll talk about that. So for the general ledger, you want to make sure that you complete all the posting procedures and closing procedures for all the other modules. You want to post the final adjusting entries in general ledger. And we'll come back to that bullet point because there are exceptions to that. Because you may not always have all of your adjusting entries at the end of the year. It may be months down the road. And so we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, we recommend that you print an account list to verify the posting type of each account. And so what I mean by that is each account that you set up in your general ledger is either designated as a balance sheet or a profit and loss account. If the account is designated as balance sheet, then uh, when you close your year, it will roll forward a balance. So if it's cash, it's going to take your balance and roll it forward as the beginning balance for the new year. If it's a profit and loss account, it's going to zero that account and put the number into your retained earnings account. So all of your P&L accounts would close to retained earnings. So what would happen if you accidentally set up a cash account as a P&L account or you set up an expense account as a balance sheet account in a hurry? Then um, you know that can leave you in a bad way. So it's, it's, uh, it's just something you want to check to make sure. And it should stick out like a sore thumb when you print that list. And I'll show you a smart list that you can put together that will allow you to do it. And then you want to close the last period of the fiscal year. And optionally, and I don't know that this really needs to be followed, is perform file maintenance on the financial series group of modules. So um, I, I, uh, I don't see that as being required. So then you want to verify the settings in the general ledger setup window, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, make a backup. Print your detailed trial balance. Print your year-end financial statements. Make sure that your new fiscal year is set up. Most likely it is because you have uh, started to move forward with your other sub-ledger modules, and those years have to be set up for that anyway. And then close your fiscal year. Lastly, then you can close all the fiscal periods for the series. Um, also, then you can adjust the budget figures for the new year and then print, the fi print your financials and lastly make a backup. So let me start and go through a couple of these windows to make sure that you're comfortable with this. This is actually the window where you close your year. It's actually a fairly harmless screen. First thing it asks for is your retained earnings account. And you can either have a single or you can have a divisional retained earnings account, depending on how you've defined it. And then the system, when you, when you actually run the year end, you can see that you have a button down here called, that says close year. I highlighted a couple other things that I thought were important for you to see. 
Number one is you can actually reverse a closed year. So you can actually reopen a year. And that actually uh, came about as um, an update, um, I think, in version 2015. Um, and so you can actually reopen a year, which you never had the ability to do before. The other blank box that I put in there is uh, for any of you that have used GP for a, a number of years, uh, sometimes the, G, the, uh, the GL is the module that takes a while to close because it's actually transferring a lot of data that hit that general ledger in your open year and moving it into a history file. Um, and so sometimes that can take a while. We've actually had clients that will uh, think that the system's lock out, locked up and they'll reboot. And then they've really caused themselves a mess. They'll have to restore a backup and go over again. So in GP 2015, uh, Microsoft introduced actually a progress bar, which seems so simple, right? And that progress bar will actually show right there in that blank area so that you know that it is continuing to run. Uh, so obviously something that uh, makes sense for us to know so that we don't uh, get concerned that the system has locked up. All right, so uh, this window is the uh, setup window inside of uh, uh, the general ledger. And so with this window, what you can see is over here, this is where we determine uh, do we close the divisional account segments or just a single retained earnings account? So in other words, if I had a segment in my chart of accounts that was a department, I could actually have multiple retained earnings accounts based on department. The other thing that's important here is uh, do you allow posting to history? So another uh, strategy that you can have is you can close your year and then you can actually go back and post adjustments to that closed year um, if you have this box checked. And you can turn that box, you can click it to check it, and then you can uncheck it as well. If you post to a historical year, you can only post to the most currently closed year. And if you do that, it will actually do the appropriate adjustment to retained earnings if it's P&L accounts or roll forward adjustments to the beginning balance as if it's a balance sheet account. So understand that that actually is an option. So, and that's been there for a long time. And then they just more recently added the ability to reverse a closed year. So the idea is, is you're going to have opportunity. Now, the important thing to know is from a financial reporting perspective, if you're not going to close your year for a couple months, you still may want to be able to produce preliminary financial statements for the new year. And therefore, especially on the balance sheet side, you would want to go ahead and close your year so that you have your balances rolled forward and so forth. And then when appropriate, you can allow posting to history so that you can update those ending balances or beginning balances uh, for the new year uh, so that your, um, your new year trend, uh, financial statements are correct. Hopefully that makes sense. This is actually the smart list I was uh, uh, talking about. This smart list allows us to uh, take a look at all of our accounts in our chart of accounts and, and be able to see if they're a balance sheet or a profit and loss account and, um, and make sure that we do this before we close the year to make sure that the accounts will roll forward properly uh, when the year is closed. And so really that's all I wanted to cover. Um, if you have any questions, here's my email address. You're welcome to reach out to me or anyone that you work with associates. And you can also reach me here at uh, this number as well. Um, and so I'm going to open it back up to questions. We still have 10 minutes left in our hour. And so um, Lindsay, do we have any questions now? We do. We have a couple. Um, the first okay. one is, if you do not use the fixed asset module, do you need to run this procedure? No. And 
The next one is, we are a mid-sized business. Uh, business. There is no way to get um, all the year-end entries for accounts payable and accounts receivable in before entering items for 2017. Um, you mentioned a script available. Is, there, is that included in our maintenance agreement on how to incorporate this? Uh, yes, it, it's easy for us to get for you. I think we have to actually request it from Microsoft. I think that's what we have to do. But if that becomes an issue, then you just need to reach out to us and we'll make sure you get taken care of on that. And then what is the... And that's a, that, one more thing, Lindsay. That is a common, that is a common issue. So what you're asking about there with not being able to close tables or receivables quite on time, that's very common. So we definitely can help you out with that. And then um, another question, what is the best way to handle vendors that don't send out invoices until after the first of the year has already passed? Well, uh, I, think, I think different companies handle it different ways. Um, some companies will actually um, just decide to expense that or post that invoice into the new year if it's too long. Uh, but you know, leaving, you know, just like that question was just asked, you do have the ability to, you know, um, wait. The question is, how long do you want to wait? And then the other question, I'll throw out this at, at you as well, is. Are the, do you really analyze those year-to-date numbers? Many companies do because they want to know who are we selling the most to and who are we buying the most from. But the question really is, is how precise do those numbers need to be for you? Uh, because sometimes people decide it's just not that important for them. So that's, that's another question that you'll have to, you'll have to kind of decide on um, what's best for you. Um, and then another question, is the smart list for posting type a pre-setup report? Uh, could you ask that one more time? I'm, Lindsay, I'm not sure I heard. Is the smart list for posting type a pre-setup report? Um, well, let me check real quick. If not, it's easy to create, uh, but let me, let me uh, do a quick look. Um, I think I have, yes, it is. There's an example of it right there. Uh, all right, um, and then can you describe um, how to set up a new year? Yes, that's probably easier to show. So let me let me go back into my GP. Um, so, and, and this is probably a good review anyway. So if we go into administration and we go into setup, this. I happen to have it right here, and I go to company, and I go to fiscal period. So this has a 2017 set up, and I think I even have 2018. But let's say, for instance, I want to set up 2019. All I have to do is tell it the beginning and ending and the number of, uh, the number of periods in that year, and then I just go calculate. And there it is. Now, you have some choices here. You have the ability, like some companies work like on a four-week, four-week, five-week period. So these dates can be changed. And also, if you prefer, you can actually come in here and name these periods. So that's completely up to you. I hope that helps. All right. And then that okay. is all the questions that I have. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to, uh, I'll wait for another minute, but otherwise we can give you about five minutes back in your day.
Um, and uh, I really appreciate all of you taking the time to visit with us today. And hopefully you'll find that this was uh, useful for you as you prepare. Well, Lindsay, I think we can call it a day then. <laughs>